My name is Paul Furs, and I'm the head of test methods development at Titleist. Test methods development builds and maintains the test equipment that R&D uses to test uh, our current products and all of our candidate products that are in development. Today, we've got a high-speed camera, and we're looking at driver impacts on a variety of balls and a variety of uh, ball speeds. And we're doing that as a teaching point with videos to show people that uh, even if you've got a lower uh, driver speed, that you still compress the ball sufficiently. I, I, I gather there's talk out in the world that I don't, I don't swing hard enough to play the Pro V or I don't swing hard enough to play the, the Pro V1X. Well, honestly, if you compare the 120 mile an hour driver speed to the 175 mile an hour driver speed, then you'll see that the compression on the ball is really quite similar. Today we're shooting 22,000 frames a second. That gives us about 10 or 12 individual frames of the ball on the club face. Uh, we've got a, uh, an exposure time of 15 microseconds, which is a little bit long, but I wanted the images to be nice and bright. We can take measurements of the ball and we know precisely what the time is from one frame to another. So we look at it as a series of still pictures and we can look at the mechanics of how the ball impacts the club and how that translates into to spin and speed and launch angle. The first time we did this, there were a bunch of things that, that the ball does that you I really didn't expect. We did expect that the compressions would be similar. That was part of the point of, of going through this exercise. So that wasn't a real surprise. But when the club comes into the ball, you know, ball's round, as best that I can do round with my fingers, the, the club comes into it and, and this side of the ball goes flat. And there are three or four frames where the ball looks like a D. You know, flat on this side and, and round here. And then right before it's done, the back side of the ball pulls in like that and then goes out. When it comes off the club face, the ball is actually longer. It's not round anymore. So it does you know, spring right off the club face. And it's one thing knowing that that happens. It's a whole other thing seeing it. It is. It's really cool. It's a lot of fun. We have used this camera in this kind of setup to, to look at how the ball responds, contact time, how long the, the ball is on the club face. On a wedge, we look at the ball sliding up the wedge face and what the mechanics of that are. So there are other uh, sciencey things that we do with the camera. This stage, this is the very early uh, development of a golf ball. So we look at lots of different kinds of materials. We look at lots of different combinations, different paints, uh, different dimple patterns. We weed through a lot of stuff at, the, at these early stages. You know, a lot of it's pretty good, but we keep, we keep going until we can find something that's just the best. So I've been a, a Titleist for a long, long time, for 15, 16 years. I've been in automation all the time. Um, so I like, I like being able to tell a machine what to do. I'm a two-year-old with a light switch, right? You've ever seen that? That's me. Hey, look what, look what I can make this thing do. So that's, that's what I like. Oh yeah, me, me and everybody I work with. We all take this very seriously. We all love what we do. I love it when the guy picks up the ball after that last putt and does, you know, right that to the camera. It's a Titleist. That's, you know, we make a great product. Everybody knows we make a great product. It's, yeah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, it really is.